Welcome once again. After a very interesting conversation on the news, uh, paper review, uh, let's move into sharing with you what happened today in history. I'm starting with somewhere in New Zealand in the year 2012. It's something called the Katatan hot air balloon disaster that led to the uh, loss of about 11 lives. It's a very, very sad thing. And, you know, it, it made me um, also start to wonder if I would ever want to get on a hot air balloon. Uh, very not likely, because I still have, a, a, you know, fear of heights. <laughs> so, yes, it happened in 2012. Um, the hot air balloon took off sometime around 6.35 a.m. in the morning, 6.38 a.m. actually in the morning. And the accident occurred around 7.20, where it collided with a, a high power line. It hit a 33,000 volt power line and that led to it you know catching fire and disintegrating and fell all the way down um it uh, of course uh, led to the uh, loss of those 11 lives two people actually if you read the story deeply two people uh, jumped out of it you know and still fell to their death uh, before you know it hit the ground um, further investigations also showed that the pilot um, tested positive for THC, also known as cannabis, and it uh, created a new laws and new policies with regards flying hot air balloons in New Zealand at that time. It's uh, seen as one of the deadliest balloon disasters in uh, New Zealand's history uh, till date. Um, and so, yeah, that, that's really you know what the, the whole of it is. Um, um, the Catatan hot air balloon disaster. If you, of course, uh, look closer... Um, I, I did a little reading on history of hot air balloons, and mm -hmm. I saw uh, that uh, the very first hot air balloon pa um, um, passengers were a duck, a rooster, and a sheep. Of course, you will uh, want to try that on yourself okay. first. <laughs> <laughs> and second, and this, this is in, what, 1783. Um, the second time, or rather, the first pilots also of the hot air balloon were condemned criminals. Wow. Yes. Just to make sure that, you know, if they survive, then maybe we can, we can give it a try. <laughs> Well, that's, that's, I think what's quite interesting for me is about the jumpers, people who jump from you know, the hot air balloon. I think two people who yes. jumped were discovered dead close to the crash site. And it's so interesting just to see how, if you even look at the 9-11, historic photos of people jumping from the buildings, people jumping to escape fire. It's just, it's, it's a dilemma really. Do you stay and burn or do you jump and risk, you know. I mean, people would take chances, you know. You would, you know, have to weigh, you know, which, you know, uh, you have a higher chance of survival. You know, if you stay on the hot air balloon, it's already on fire, it's disintegrated, it's falling fast, it's going to crash, obviously. Um, so do you take a chance of, you know, jumping and seeing if you would survive? I'm sure that's what they decided. Okay, let's jump and see if uh, maybe we would survive. Maybe, you know, we just somehow would make it with a few broken bones. But unfortunately, they didn't. Um, it's a disaster, you know, regardless of how they went. Um, you know, the interesting thing is that they all passed. Um, all 11 of them, including the pilot, uh, yeah. didn't make it out alive, you know. And um, it makes you, you know, really, really wonder about, you know, how safety measures, how much more safety measures have been put in place um, over time to ensure that some of these things um, are I'll prevented. Exactly, yeah. uh, truly safe to fly. Yes, the next uh, topic we're looking at about uh, we're looking at is uh, what occurred in uh, January seventh, nineteen forty-six. This was a very puzzling case. It was a case of a split personality uh, in puzzling Chicago murders. Now, what occurred was the murder of one of the youngest victims of the most historic cases of a teen killer. In the United States history, a six-year-old Suzanne Dagnan was kidnapped from her home in an affluent Chicago neighborhood. Her father, James Dagnan, found a note on the floor asking for $20,000 ransom. Her father went on to the radio to plead for, her daughter's, for his daughter's safety, but the kidnapper never made any further demands. She had been strangled to death on the night of a kidnapping and then sadly dismembered with a hunting knife. Her Very remains sad. were then left in five different sewers and catch basins. At the scene of the attack, the killer wrote in a message, uh, you know, using a lipstick on the victim's wall, saying, for heaven's sake, catch me before I kill more. I cannot control myself. This led to him being described as the lipstick killer. Now, the ransom note at the Dagnan house was the best clue that investigators had to tracking down the serial killer. And here's where it gets spooky, Osorogi. Investigations led to the arrest of one 70-year-old boy called William Terrence. When this boy was being interrogated, he claimed that a man called George Mormon had killed Susan, not him. 
But they eventually discovered that George himself wasn't a real person, but that it was his alter ego, Herent himself, who had killed the, the six-year-old girl, claiming it was somebody else. Yep. Do you understand? It was Multiple a split. personality exactly. disorder. It was a true schizophrenic, and prosecutors decided not to uh, risk losing an insanity defense because they were going to plead that, you know, he's not mentally stable, and they agreed not to seek the de death penalty against him. But he pleaded guilty on three counts of murder. He was sentenced to life in prison without parole, and uh, he died in prison in the year 2012. It's a terrible, terrible, terrible thing. Um, um, I don't know if we have a lot of those cases here in Nigeria, you know, multiple personality disorders, uh, schizophrenia. I think they are. I'm sure they are, you know, but, um, you know, when it eventually results in this uh, type of, um, um, you know, a crime, you know, it's really, really hard to, to, you know, to stomach and hard to understand. And also, you know, one thing that I'm not sure if we really deal a lot with is uh, uh, pleading, you know, insanity with regards um, crimes here in Nigeria. We don't, I don't get to hear a lot. I've, I've never heard a lot of that, you know, where a person commits a crime and, you know, the legal team is able to, you know, plead that, yeah, he might have mental, you know, issues that he's dealing with. And, but there have know, been cases like that. Uses. There was a case in the news um, this week about a man who was, you know, having, who had mental issues stabbing his brother to death, mm -hmm. you know, so yeah, cases like that. Are yeah, I mean, yes, you, there's those ones. What I'm, what I'm talking about is where a legal team is able to convince uh, a court that a person who is not evidently and obviously having mental challenges, um, you know, um, you know, you, they can still plead, you know, insanity for that person and, you know, maybe win the court case or reduce, you know, the jail term for that person. It's not very popular. And, you know, maybe also because yes. we don't have a jury system here. And um, especially and because, you know, we still don't exactly uh, pay attention to mental issues health. about mental health. Absolutely. You know, so they would easily discard it and say that's just... Absolutely. Uh, that's just excuses. All right. So, yes, anyway, yes. January 4th, 1946. And, uh, of course, uh, it, we're talking about January 7th in the year 1946, and as well the, uh, as the hot air balloon crash in, in uh, New Zealand in 2012. Absolutely. That's what we have for you today, uh, today in history. See how you can make history today, all right? See if we can tell a story of what yes. you did a couple of years from now, all right? You, Let's you make might, history. You know, invent something. Do it, you know, make history in a, in a positive way. Yes, you can invent right? COVID-19 vaccines. We do. We do need that. We do need that in Nigeria. And it's our next big topic on The Breakfast. Stay with us.